Building a top blog. This is a good time for us to discuss how you go about creating your top blog. We just discussed the importance of creating something that is every bit as professional as your inspiration for your logo. Now it's time to take the same approach to creating your own website. Again, it needs to look just as good as the best in your niche. Cut no corners and don't accept anything that anyone could consider to be unprofessional or amateur. The basics. Okay, so I'm not going to go into massive detail here about how to create a blog. It's really very easy to get detailed instructions on how to do things like signing up for a hosting account and setting up WordPress. So you don't need me to go over it in depth here. What I will say though is that you need a hosting account, probably with a service like Bluehost. And you will probably want to use WordPress to create your site. WordPress is a site builder and content management system that will allow you to create new posts as easily as clicking post and manage the existing posts just as easily. What's more is that you can completely change the look and feel of WordPress by installing new plugins and themes and there's a huge thriving community filled with people who will help you to come to grips with it, answer any questions you have and build entirely new tools to help you out. This will be particularly important for us later on because we're going to be using a lot of plugins in order to help us promote our site and grow it faster. WordPress now powers a third of the web and is used in some of the biggest and most successful sites on the web, such as the BBC, Forbes, Mashable, Android Authority, the 4-Hour Blog, Smart Passive Income, and many others. In other words, it is a tried and tested commodity which removes a lot of the guesswork. We know that WordPress sites can be highly successful, and so when you use WordPress, you can rest assured that it's not the design or the code of the site that is holding you back. If you're not successful yet, then you need to concentrate on other aspects of your business rather than worrying about the way the site has been built. WordPress is also completely free and very easy to install. Through Bluehost cPanel, you can actually install WordPress with a single click. This will make life much easier for you, so don't consider using any other strategy which could ultimately waste your time and create more opportunity for things to go wrong. Creating your theme. Once you have WordPress installed, the next step is to choose a theme. The great thing about WordPress, as mentioned, is that you can install new themes very quickly. You can browse for themes through WordPress's own tool, but I don't recommend using any of these. Most of them are not terribly well designed, and what's more is that they will be used on so many websites so yours won't be unique. So instead, Head over to a site like ThemeForest and be prepared to pay a bit for a professional looking theme. This isn't going to be astronomical, we're talking in the realm of $30. But as we've already seen, a professional site is an absolute must if you want others to take your site seriously and get excited about it. Make sure to check the previews and pick something that is responsive, meaning it adapts to the shape and size of the screen looking at it, that is crisp and uses high definition images and that is relatively minimalist and not too overcrowded so that it looks busy or complicated. Better yet is to pay a professional design company to build you a theme from scratch. But if you want to hold off, you can wait until your site has picked up some momentum before you go about doing this. Finally, you want to customize the theme yourself. This will start by using your logo in the header and from there, you want to make sure that the colors of the rest of your site match that header. You might also want to think about implementing a different background moving widgets around, choosing whether you want to add or keep the slider, etc. Think about the type of content you're going to be writing and whether the layout will be conducive to that. For instance, many themes are very image focused and this is particularly true if you choose a theme that has a slider, meaning it will rotate through large crisp images that come from your blog post. This is great if you have a good camera and if you like to make lots of high quality images for your articles. But if you don't have the means of making or acquiring the images, then it can actually be a bad thing. So make sure that you only feature images heavily if you have the ways and means to make them. Top plugins for bloggers. Now your blog is up and running, so you can enhance its capabilities with some plugins. These are small programs that will add features to your site or to the control panel behind the scenes, thereby giving you more control over the content. There are some plugins that are essential and others that can help a great deal when it comes to getting your site on the fast track to success. Here are some that you should consider installing. WordPress SEO by Yoast. WordPress SEO from Yoast is your one-stop shop for search optimization. It makes the process very easy. It's the one recommended by the most users 
and lets you control things like the title of the post as seen by spiders, as well as checking your keyword density and more. We'll talk a little more about SEO in future, but for now, this is a good start to get a little more love from Google. W3 Total Cache W3 Total Cache can speed up your website by using caching. This means that certain images and other elements won't need to be loaded from scratch each time a visitor lands on your page. It's a useful strategy and might help to reduce your bounce rate by appeasing impatient viewers. Link Within Link Within will place related posts at the bottom of each of your articles, that way giving your readers an easy way to find more of your content. This is a great way to keep people on your site because they'll want to keep on reading and won't come to a dead end after they finish the post they're on. Akismet One of the few downsides of WordPress is the way it can attract spam comments, which can in some cases make your life a constant process of deleting nonsense posts. Akismet is the best plugin out there for reducing that spam count and can make every blogger and site owner's life considerably easier as a result. XML Sitemap XML Sitemap is a great plugin that can help you to generate a sitemap for your blog with a single click. In turn, this will help Google to index your site and any new posts so it's definitely worth an install. Jetpack Jetpack is not just one plugin, but actually several that all come from WordPress.com themselves. This includes site stats for those without analytics, email subscriptions, social networking tools, and more. It comes pre-installed and it's more than worth a couple of seconds of setup. AdSense Explosion If you want to monetize your blog with AdSense but don't want to get too fiddly with it, then AdSense Explosion is an ideal choice, giving you just enough control while keeping things simple. It has had a few problems, but the support is good enough to make it the go-to AdSense plugin for many a blogger. Again, we'll talk about this more in future, but for now you can install this, add your own AdSense code if you have it, and start profiting right away. All-in-One Favicon All-in-One Favicon is the simplest way to add a favicon to your site, that being the small image that comes up next to the title in the browser. This will make your site look more professional and increase your brand awareness in moments. Google Analytics While Jetpack gives you some web stats, they pale in comparison to the in-depth nature of Google Analytics that will really allow you to see how your site is performing and hone it to perfection. This plugin means your site will be analytics ready with no hassle adding code to your pages manually. Google Topography If you go with the pre-made WordPress theme, you're still going to want to edit it to make the design yours. Changing the topography is one important way to do this, and this plugin makes that simple. Go back and look at those top blogs in your niche again that I told you to note down. You'll notice that all of them have a very nice, crisp font that is easy to read. That's important because it's going to make people want to spend time on those sites. Styles Styles allows you to easily change many more aspects of your WordPress theme right from the WordPress customizer. Discus Discus is the best comment system for many reasons and will improve the look of your comment section as well as making it incredibly easy for users to post and for you to manage. This also creates a new way for people to discover your site through the Discus community itself. Optimize Database Optimize Database will help you to keep your database clean, thereby keeping your site sprightly and avoiding errors. WooCommerce WooCommerce is one of the best and easiest ways for businesses to sell products directly from their site and thus monetize their blog. More on this later. The plugin is free, but payment gateway extensions will cost you a little, $25 to $75. iTheme Security Formerly known as Better WP Security, this is a plugin that provides numerous ways to further improve the security of your blog, an important consideration for any business. Bottom of every post. This is a plugin that allows you to add a section of code at the bottom of every post. Pretty simple. It's great because it's going to let us add our opt-in form later on, the way that people sign up to our mailing list. Shareaholic. This is one of several plugins that will allow your visitors to quickly and easily share your content on their social media pages. It's a quick way to get more likes on Facebook and tweets on Twitter, which in turn brings more visitors to your site. Instagram Widget by WP Zoom. This is going to place a feed with your Instagram pictures right into a widget, ideally on your homepage. This will allow people to see that you are active on Instagram and get a taste for the kind of content you share. That means more followers, and it means your site will look more active and interesting. Twiggit Twitter Widget. 
In a similar vein, Twiget allows you to show your Twitter feed. This is great because it means people can see that you are active on social media and get a taste for the kind of content you create. In turn, that will mean that you can gain a lot more followers on there a lot more quickly. YouTube Channel YouTube Channel from Alexander Yurosevich is a very powerful tool that will embed your YouTube videos into your sidebar, either your latest video or a random one. In a moment, we're going to discuss in depth why YouTube is such an important part of your business plan. Creating a personal brand. Okay, so now we're going to talk a bit more about the interesting stuff. The differentiating factors that will help you to become a top blogger rather than just a blogger. One of the options available to you here then is to create a personal brand. This basically means that you're going to put yourself at the forefront of your branding and messaging, and you're going to become a living advocate and example of the lifestyle you're living. This isn't 100% necessary to run a top blog, but if you think about the biggest blogs on the web that aren't owned by massive companies, then you'll realize that the personality of the owner is often front and center. I am Alpha M, Strength Camp, Smart Passive Income, The 4-Hour Workweek, Matthew Woodward, Brain Pickings, The Art of Manliness, Nerd Fitness, Mark's Daily Apple, Heidi Cohen, etc. Having a personality attached to a blog makes it much more relatable, much more interesting, and much more trustworthy. When you read a blog that is run by an actual person who is happy for you to see their face, you can feel as though you almost know that person. That way, you're more likely to trust their opinion and to feel as though they are talking right to you when you read their comments. Likewise, you can enjoy a bit of the voyeurism that comes from getting a glimpse into someone else's life, and you can live vicariously and see what their lifestyle must be like. Reading about fitness on a generic blog is detached, and you have no reassurance that the person writing cares about you, that they practice what they preach, or that what they preach even works. But if you're reading the blog of a guy who lives the life he promotes, who is in fantastic shape, who looks confident and attractive, and who is friendly and outgoing, then suddenly they become a walking advert for the ideas and lifestyle they recommend. Suddenly, you want to listen. Creating a personal brand also opens up a lot more marketing opportunities and makes a lot more sense when it comes to Instagram, etc. So how do you do it? Step 1. Invest in your most important brand. In life, your name is your most important brand. Now, that is also going to be true in an even more literal business sense. And just like any brand, you need to invest if you want to get the most from it. In other words, you need to practice what you preach, and you need to show that you are someone worth listening to. If a tramp came up to you and started giving you advice, would you listen? No. Likewise, if a regular-looking guy or gal came up and gave you advice, you might likewise not be all that inclined to listen. We listen to people who seem to have it all together, and so you need to try and present that face to the world. This means that you need to start thinking about how you come across. If you don't normally spend any time looking after your health and fitness, then you need to start doing that and hitting the gym. Likewise, you can start thinking about your clothes a little more and giving yourself a little more time to shave, to clip your nails, and to moisturize. Spend a bit more money on your clothes. This might mean you need to own fewer items of clothing, but it is much better to have a few very impressive items than it is to have a lot of junk. Make sure that your clothes fit well. All this might sound small, but if you are creating YouTube videos or posting images to Instagram, then people will unconsciously pick up on that night's watch and the high-quality fabrics you're in. And this will give what you're seeing more weight and more credibility. Instagram is a great place to focus on how you're going to create an image for yourself. Instagram is all about making life more artistic and more exciting than it is. So make sure you are taking photos of the things you're doing that are relevant to your brand. And to make sure that you're playing with angles, lighting, and filters in order to make them more dramatic and desirable. Again, take a look at what the top people in your niche are doing. How are they selling the lifestyle? You can also be a bit candid with it. Don't be afraid to show occasional pictures of yourself out in the town with friends, or traveling, or chilling with a mug of coffee. Don't do this too often if it is off-brand. But do it a little, because that way you can demonstrate that you are a well-rounded person with a lot going on. Once again, this makes you a person that people want to emulate, follow, and listen to. Remember, 
It's all about the brand, and that means demonstrating that you have the lifestyle that your readers want. You don't need to be dishonest, but just make sure that you practice what you preach and that you can show the benefits of that on camera. Creating social media accounts is very important if you're going to be building a personal brand, and this will allow your visitors and your followers to feel as though they're getting to know you. We'll discuss this more in future videos. Creating Content Now you have your blog and your brand, and you know the kind of personality that you want to portray. Everything is in place for you to start filling your site and your social media accounts with content. And yes, it is implied that you should have set up social media accounts on at least the top sites by now. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. If you haven't, then go and do that now. Now you can begin posting. And here's what that is going to entail. Blogging. To become a top blogger, you need to blog. Obviously, our aim here is to go full-time as a blogger so that we aren't reliant on any other source of income and we can potentially give up the day jobs. One of the first things you need to know in order to do this, then, is that your blogging is going to need to be highly regular. You need to post at least once a week, but where possible, I recommend that you post much more frequently. This is another thing that should be fairly obvious, but that seems to elude a lot of new bloggers. If you want to blog full-time, then you need to treat it like a full-time job to begin with. You can't blog for two hours a week and expect to become top dog. Blogging frequently will help you to get more attention on Google because it will create more content for Google to index and because it will help you build momentum with your readers. You'll be giving them a good reason to come back regularly apart from anything else. At the same time, even if you only have long tail keywords, meaning that you only occasionally get a visit from Google on each post, the more you have, the more you will scale up your profits. Look at it this way. If each blog post you have gets 20 cents a month from Google and you write 40 blog posts per month, then you'll still be making $96 within the first year. Fortunately, the nature of Google and blogging in general is such that things like this tend to snowball. The more people read your site, the more you'll get shared, and the more additional people will come to your site. So the more content you write, the better. Only problem is that it takes a lot of time to write content, and when you start out, you'll probably be trying to fit this in around your other daily activities. That's why I highly recommend that you consider using somewhat smaller articles for the most part. Make these around 700 to 800 words, and that way you can more realistically manage to write several a week. You can even write these at the start of the week in order to make sure you have a batch ready to go. That said, there are a lot of positives for writing long-form content, which Google is a big fan of, Long-form content is anything 1,500 words or longer, with lots of links and with lots of images, etc. These types of posts can become resources, meaning that Google will feature them more prominently, and meaning that your readers might share them as useful tools to illustrate a point or bring someone up to speed on a subject as part of a discussion. Ideally, then, you will intersperse your lighter posts with a couple of mega posts to keep your site more varied and to give yourself the best of both worlds. Ideally, posting three shorter posts a week and one longer post would be an excellent place to start. What to write? Okay, so the next question is, what should you be writing? This is going to depend on the nature of your site and the niche, of course. But some things that will be true regardless of your topic are, it should be written in a colloquial, friendly manner that is easy to read. It should provide value to the reader. It should be unique, exciting, and engaging. Again, Stay away from things that are generic, and instead only write topics that are exciting, new, and original. For instance, you might find a way to combine two different subjects in a unique and interesting way. What footballers can learn from martial arts. Or you might just dive deeper into a subject than most people do. The psychology of gardening. Why is it so addicting? Again, stay away from the generic stuff. You want your content to be so unique and exciting that when someone sees the title, they feel compelled to read it. Treat each post like a product and put all the same care and time into it as you would with any other product. Social media posting. That's how you will keep your blog alive with content. So now what about your social media? How will you fill this with interesting new posts and make sure that the people want to keep reading? The first thing to consider is that once again, your content needs to be regular. There is nothing worse than a completely dead social media page and this will absolutely drive people away from your brand. 
A tip to help you keep the content flowing is to write posts in advance and schedule them using a tool like Buffer, as well as to consider creating synergy between your social media accounts with a tool like IFTTT. IFTTT will make it so that you can ensure all future posts to Instagram with a specific hashtag will also be posted to Twitter, for example, thereby ensuring a steady flow of content on both channels, even though you're only creating media for one of them. If you are creating a personal brand, then this allows you to post about your day and hopefully you'll find that inspiration strikes regarding when you can post and what you can say. Using your mobile phone will help a lot here as you always have them on us and so it should be easy to pull them out to snap a photo of your workout, of what we're eating or of where we're traveling. This way we are bringing our audience along with us throughout our travels and our routine and thereby promoting the brand and our lifestyles. Of course, you also want to share the content you create, and you can do this directly through WordPress. Another tip, don't be afraid to post old content that you made a while ago. This is a great way to get people to see posts they might have missed, and to make more use from your evergreen posts. This is also something to keep in mind when you're posting seemingly into the void and no one is reading your work. While you might not be getting any feedback now, it doesn't mean those same posts won't get read in the future. Again, the most important thing to do is to provide value of some sort. The way you do this will vary from social media platform to social media platform. On Twitter, the most common way to provide value is with entertainment, humorous or interesting snippets relevant to your niche. On Facebook, it's a good idea to share content that you find interesting and that your audience might as well. Look at Facebook pages like LAD Bible or IFL Science for a good model of how this works. If you post a lot of interesting things and your branding is clear, people will follow you just to stay updated. And finally, on Instagram, the best way to provide value is by offering inspiration by letting people live vicariously. This is why people like to see pictures of people doing yoga against sunrises on the beach or working in cafes and suits. Is it narcissistic? Maybe, but it's what people want to see, and it can work wonders for your brand.